凌晨一点就已经来这里排队，排到现在十点多，已经排了八九个小时。哈喽，同学们，苹果公司在大中华地区的第55家 Apple Store 零售店，今天在深圳罗湖万盛城一期下行广场这里正式开业。这里人真的是人山人海，非常非常多人，排队都看不到队尾。中国芯片最珍贵，华为好，华为美。This is Nanjing Road in Shanghai, the busiest, most prosperous, and most commercial landmark of Shanghai. An Apple flagship store stands here, and on the day of a new iPhone release, the store is packed. Not far away is Huawei's largest flagship store worldwide. Yet on the same day, it appears unusually quiet. A Shanghai blogger has captured this moment through their lens. On March 30th, 2023. Huawei's new P60 was released. Let's take a look at its popularity. The scene is the same Huawei flagship store on Nanjing Road in Shanghai, where customers are outnumbered by staff. According to mainland media reports, Huawei has become a national enterprise in China, a trump card against America. But why does the largest store look deserted? Are the so-called patriotic little pinks only vocal about their patriotism? To understand why such a situation might occur, let's take a look at Huawei's recent development. The P60 mentioned by the Shanghai blogger is Huawei's new high-end smartphone released this year. The phone is equipped with a high-end camera, and the release also includes the Mate X3 series, equipped with a folding screen. However, due to sanctions from the United States, both flagship products lack 5G capabilities and cannot use Google's Android operating system and many popular Western apps. In the era of 5G, the new phone only has 4G capabilities, while the iPhone offers 5G services. Who would spend similar money on an outdated phone? Yu Chengdong, a Huawei executive director, said in an interview with the media in July last year, "Huawei can't produce its own chips." And others can't sell chips to Huawei. Huawei, as a global leader in 5G, is the only company selling 4G phones in the 5G era. This is a joke. Huawei briefly surpassed Apple and Samsung Electronics to become the world's largest smartphone seller, according to data from market tracking agency Canalys. Its global market share reached a peak of 18% in 2019. However, a series of export controls imposed on Huawei by the Trump administration subsequently restricted the company's access to foreign technology. Huawei was later forced to cut back some of its profitable consumer products business. Last year, Huawei's share in the global smartphone market was two percent, and most of its sales were in China. The current state of Huawei's smartphone business indicates that Huawei still relies on American technology for some key components. According to a report by international research agency Counterpoint Research in December last year, Huawei's inventory of high-end chips used for manufacturing smartphones has been exhausted. Under the U.S. chip supply cutoff, Huawei may be forced to exit the global smartphone market. James Lewis, director of the Technology and Public Policy Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, told Voice of America that U.S. sanctions have hit Huawei hard, but Huawei has survived relying on 4G technology. Since 2019, as a major supplier of equipment used for 5G telecom networks, Huawei has been the target of several rounds of U.S. export controls. These measures have cut off Huawei's chip supply from American companies, as well as its access to American technology tools to design its own chips and have them manufactured by partners. Last year, the Biden administration also banned the sale of new Huawei equipment in the U.S. To date, suppliers selling non-cutting edge technologies such as 4G can still apply to U.S. Department of Commerce for licenses to trade with Huawei. The U.S. Department of Commerce has approved billions of dollars in such sales by U.S. suppliers, including Intel, which sells chips for Huawei laptops, and Qualcomm, which provides 4G smartphone chips. However, the Biden administration is considering tightening export control measures against Huawei, banning all commercial dealings with the company.
including exports to other companies and middlemen supplying Huawei. A comprehensive technology embargo will further squeeze Huawei's space for survival and development, as the production for some of Huawei's 4G equipment also depends on American technology. In April this year, Seagate Technology, the world's largest manufacturer of hard drives, disks, and read-write heads, was fined $300 million because its subsidiary violated the ban and sold hard drives to Huawei. This is the largest single administrative fine in U.S. history. In May 2020, the U.S. Department of Commerce issued regulations prohibiting U.S. companies from exporting semiconductor products using American technology or design to Huawei, which is on the entity list, even if the manufacturing takes place outside of the United States. This ban is aimed at protecting national security. For many years, U.S. officials have been concerned that Huawei's telecommunication technology and equipment could be used by Chinese authorities to monitor Americans. On April 19th, the Department of Commerce accused Seagate of continuing to sell American technology to Huawei without permission in September 2020, and signing a three-year contract to become its sole hard drive supplier. Upon investigation, it was found that Seagate's subsidiaries in California and Singapore provided more than 7.4 million hard drives to Huawei entities, worth approximately 1.1 billion U.S. dollars. In a statement, Seagate acknowledged these charges and reached an agreement with the Bureau of Industry and Security of the U.S. Department of Commerce, agreeing to pay hundreds of millions in fines. The company believes this is the best solution to the issue. In fact, Huawei has been struggling for years on how to survive under the U.S. ban. Earlier this year, Huawei released its 2022 annual report. It showed that in 2022, Huawei achieved sales revenue of $92.251 billion, an increase of 0.9% year-on-year. Net profit was $5.113 billion, a decrease of 68.7% year-on-year, with a net profit margin of 5.5% marking a record low. On March 31st, at the site of Huawei's 2022 annual report release, rotating chairman Xu Zhijun attributed the sharp decline in net profit to the rising prices of bulk commodities, China's strict pandemic control measures last year, and increased R&D spending. Xu Zhijun stated that the challenging external environment and non-market factors continue to impact Huawei's operations. At the same time, Xu Zhijun also candidly stated, 2023 is a crucial year for Huawei's survival and development. Amidst the storm, we continue to run in the rain. Starting from April 1st, Meng Wanzhou began serving as Huawei's rotating chairman. However, Meng's father and Huawei founder Ren Zhengfei remains the most influential figure in Huawei. At the site of Huawei's 2022 annual report release in the face of the current situation, Meng Wanzhou said, We may not necessarily succeed, but we are prepared to die for our cause. How can we not achieve nobility? Meng Wanzhou was arrested by Canadian authorities during a layover in Vancouver en route to South America in December 2018. She was then wanted by the U.S. in connection with allegations that Huawei had illegally sold telecommunications equipment to Iran. After Meng's arrest, two Canadians were subsequently detained in China, an act widely seen as retaliation by Beijing, leading to a three-way diplomatic standoff. This standoff ended in September 2021 with a prisoner exchange. Meng Wanzhou agreed to admit to misconduct in exchange for the U.S. dropping charges. The U.S. withdrew these charges in December last year. With Meng's elevated status in Huawei, she refrains from traveling around the world, meeting heads of state and Huawei customers. Huawei's dismal annual report has also posed challenges to Meng Wanzhou. Where will Huawei go next in this prolonged period of hardship? Ren Zhengfei has already reminded us that Huawei is still fighting for survival. Huawei's decline in China is not an isolated case. The path to breakthroughs in China's autonomous semiconductor innovation is also fraught with difficulties. In May 2023, Chinese mobile giant Oppo announced the termination of chip R&D, closing its chip design company. This news shocked the tech community, 
and once again showed the setbacks in China's chip-making movement. Just over a month ago, news of the mass production of Oppo's self-developed chips became the focus of market attention. Emulating the Huawei High Silicon model, Oppo established the Oppo Zeku model, launching new smartphones equipped with its own chips. However, a month later, Oppo abruptly announced the termination of chip R&D and the closure of its chip design company, Zeku Technology, leaving over 3,000 employees facing unemployment. The dream of chip manufacturing turned into a nightmare. Oppo's setback is naturally due to business constraints and lower than expected profitability. However, as the tech confrontation between the US and China intensifies, any minor incident in the semiconductor industry tends to be magnified and scrutinized. Thus, the blow to China's chip-making movement is also interpreted as a reflection of the extended conflict between the two sides. After Oppo's withdrawal, only Huawei and Xiaomi are left to independently develop chips among Chinese smartphone manufacturers. Meanwhile, Huawei, due to US sanctions, has no foreseeable timeline for the release of its 5G phones. The US's technology blockade against China continues to expand. In the short term, not only is there no trend of easing, but one after another, US allies announced their participation in the encirclement, in varying degrees, cutting off China's access to the tools and technical personnel necessary for manufacturing the most advanced semiconductors. This forces Chinese semiconductor companies to accelerate changes in their supply chains and production methods, embarking on a new path of self-reliance. In order to not be bottlenecked by the semiconductor industry, the Chinese government has provided a large amount of subsidies to the industry. One specific subsidy policy is to fund large chip companies in purchasing related production equipment, while on the other hand, subsidizing domestic semiconductor equipment suppliers to produce locally made equipment. The overall subsidy funds are limitless, striving to overcome the U.S. blockade. Recently, these measures have become even more explicit. One of the key players tasked with accelerating synthesization is the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund Phase 2. Besides injecting 12.9 billion RMB into China's top memory chip maker Yangtze Memory to support and strengthen the ability to cope with U.S. sanctions, the big fund Phase 2 also heavily invests in chip equipment and material suppliers. In addition, places like Guangzhou have also established a 150 billion RMB industry fund this year, which is used to invest in semiconductor-related industries. At the same time, many chip companies are planning to raise funds through public issuance. However, back to reality, among the tech companies that have invested in independent R&D over the past few years, only Huawei successfully designed the Kirin series chips. Yet, due to the U.S. ban, advanced wafer foundries such as TSMC and Samsung can no longer manufacture for Huawei. Huawei's supply chain for advanced chips has been completely cut off, and its high-end 5G phones equipped with Kirin chips may disappear. The ideal is plump, reality is lean. As the Sino-U.S. tech war gradually heats up, the CCP's wells may not necessarily equate to success.